The story of High School of the Dead starts with Takashi, Hisashi, and Rei fighting off zombies to get to the rooftop of their school. As they make their way to the rooftop, Rei tries to fight off a zombie herself and gets overpowered by it. Seeing Rei about to get eaten by the zombie, Hisashi comes to her rescue and smashes the zombie's head with a baseball bat. He kicks another zombie down the stairs and goes to the rooftop alone with others. Seeing all the zombies and students getting killed by them, Takashi screams as he fails to understand what is happening. A few hours earlier, Takashi gets a flashback of Rei promising to marry him. She would even deliberately repeat a grade as she has a crush on Takashi but starts to date Hisashi when she gets older. He gets approached by Takagi who tells him that he goes to this specific place when he faces something that he doesn't like. She tells him to take his studies seriously as it is their first semester and he is taking his studies for granted. Takagi thinks that Takashi is stupid for getting sad over his childhood friend dumping him. Rei had feelings for Takashi growing up but when he didn't notice her affection, she went with Hisashi instead. As he was lamenting himself for not realizing it, he says a zombie knocking its head continuously on the school's goat. A few adults go to check it out and one of them gets bitten by the zombie when he grabs his shirt. Mr. Tejima, who just got bitten by the zombie, dies and turns into a zombie. He gets up and bites Mrs. Hayashi. Takashi, seeing this, immediately rushes to his classroom and tells Rei to get up so they can get out of this place. When Hisashi inquires about it, Takashi tells him that some people were just killed near the school gate. Since Hisashi doubts what Takashi is saying, Takashi tells him that he has no reason to lie about such a thing. Rei initially refuses but eventually goes with him when Takashi slaps her. On their way, Takashi explains the whole situation to them and they decide that they will need some weapons. Rei tries to call the police but he doesn't pick it up. Right at that moment, an announcement is made for all the students to follow their teachers and evacuate the building as a terrifying incident is taking place inside the school. The suspicions of everyone was confirmed when the person making the announcement gets eaten alive by a zombie live on the radio. As havoc ensues in the school, Takashi and the others go to the roof so they can escape through the management building as the classroom building is overcrowded by students. On their way, they encounter their modern Japanese teacher who has turned into a zombie. Ray stabs him in the heart but the zombie keeps on moving. Hisashi grabs the zombie from behind but gets bitten on his arm. Seeing this, Rei tells Takashi to help him, who then smashes the zombie's head. They go to the rooftop and see flames and smoke coming from all over the city. They see the helicopters of the self-defense force flying over them. When Rei tries to get their attention, Hisashi stops her and says that they aren't here to rescue people but to complete a special mission. Meanwhile, the students of the school continue to get massacred by the zombies whom Takashi refers to as them. He analyzes the whole situation and realizes that everyone who gets bitten by them gets their disease and revives as one of them. They make their way up to the stairs and block the way. Hisashi, who was bitten by the zombie, tells Takashi to help him push himself off the ledge as he doesn't want to become one of them. His situation gets worse and worse. He begs Takashi to kill him as he wants to be himself till his last moment. Eventually, it gets too much for him and he dies. As Takashi approaches to kill Hisashi, Rei tries to stop him by saying that Hisashi might not turn into one of them but it was not the case as he, like all the others, turned into a zombie. Takashi rushes toward Hisashi and kills him. Rei curses him for killing Hisashi as she couldn't bear seeing Hisashi like that and was willing to get bitten and turn into one of them. When Takashi says that Hisashi wouldn't want this for her, Rei says that he did all this just because he hated Hisashi as she was dating him. Hearing this, Takashi goes away to smash the zombies downstairs since he is bothersome to her. Rei tries to stop him as he can't kill all of them by himself. Takashi ignores her and almost jumps over the barricade but Rei stops him by saying that she didn't mean anything she said and wants him to stay with her. Takashi gets down and hugs her tightly. On this day, Takashi killed his best friend Hisashi and held the girl he liked for the first time. While the others run away from the zombies, Takagi gets together with Hirano and tries to escape with him. Hirano wants to go to the faculty room but Takagi denies saying that even the teachers can do nothing about this. They also see a bunch of students getting killed by the zombies when those students went to the faculty room as Hirano wanted to. Meanwhile, Takashi and Rei continue to sit on the rooftop with the entrance to that specific place of the roof block. Rei borrows Takashi's phone to call her dad. She could hear what her dad was saying but her voice wasn't getting through. Rei's dad tells her to evacuate as soon as possible as the city is in panic mode whilst also fighting a bunch of zombies. Soon the call ended as the phone went out of service. Hirano asks Takagi if she has a cell phone with her so they can contact the police or their family. 
Takagi thinks that calling the police is useless as a lot of students probably tried to do so already and it wouldn't have any effect even if they called the police. Humans are eating humans all over the world and a few people in self-defense forces and the police can't defend and rescue everybody. In the infirmary, a student is fighting off a zombie while Miss Shizuka gathers up medicines. She is a doctor who can treat people for their injuries but it doesn't stop them from getting turned into zombies. As Miss Shizuka was gathering up medicines, zombies came inside the infirmary. The student with her gets bitten a few times before the captain of the kendo club, Siko Busujima comes and kills all the zombies. She commends the student for bravely defending the teacher and offers to end his life even though she hasn't killed a human before, knowing that he will eventually turn into a zombie. He tells her to kill him, right after she rid him of his misery. More zombies burst into the infirmary and Siko gives a sinister smile. Takagi and Hirano go to a workshop that's full of equipment and tools. Hirano finds a nail gun that uses gas to shoot nails. Takagi asks Hirano if he is one of those military nerds or gun freaks. While he was checking out the nail gun and its equipment, zombies arrived at the door of the workshop after they heard the door close earlier and eventually broke through it. Hirano sets up a scope on the nail gun using duct tape and a pencil and begins shooting the zombies in the hand and tells Takagi to give him more nails. At the same time, Takashi and Rei use a water hose to fight off zombies. Takagi refuses to gather up drills and nails as there is no reason for her to accept the orders from someone like him but when she sees his evil smile, she eventually does it. After they get rid of the zombies at the workshop, Hirano asks Takagi if there is any reason she is staying with him. Takagi just happened to be with him and there is no specific reason. After getting rid of the zombies at the stairs with the water hose, Rei and Takashi begin to descend down the school building. Takashi tells Rei that they will look for survivors on their way and then go to his house. Since his dad is alive, Rei suggests Takashi to try to contact his parents as soon as possible. They have plenty of time to contact his parents as his mom isn't home because she teaches at an elementary school and his dad works out of town. Takashi jokingly says that his parents are annoying, but deep inside. Looking at the condition of his school he is scared for his mother. He wonders what the situation is at the school where his mother teaches. At the school, Takagi throws a towel at a zombie and then throws a shoe at a locker and deduces that the zombies don't have any kind of sense and only react to sound. As they were discussing this, they saw a bunch of zombies closing in on them. Miss Shizuka and Siko make their way to the faculty room as all the car keys are in that room. Miss Shizuka asks Siko why she doesn't kill the zombies when she can easily do so. Siko replies that staying in one place exposes them to getting surrounded by zombies who are extremely strong. Shizuka fell to the ground as it was hard for her to move in her dress. Siko tears her skirt from the side making her cry as her clothes are equally important to her as her life. Takagi and Hirano continue to fight off zombies. She gets cornered by a zombie and lets out a huge scream which is heard by Takashi and Siko's group. Hirano tries to shoot the zombie cornering Takagi and realizes that he is out of nails. Takagi grabs a drill and uses it to make mincemeat out of the zombie's head. The others arrive just in time and eliminate the rest of the zombies. All of them introduce themselves to each other. Takagi, who is distraught from what just happened, loudly says that she can do whatever she wants once she puts her mind to it. Siko comes and consoles Takagi who hugs her and starts crying. They plan on taking a short break as everyone is out of their breath. Since her car might not be big enough for all of them, Siko suggests taking the school bus whose key is right there on the wall. Takashi plans on rescuing everyone's families one by one depending on who is the closest and afterward, they will look for a safe place. The group then checks the TV where outbreaks are being reported and the government is considering emergency measures. Takashi angrily punches the desk thinking why they wouldn't tell the real situation to the general public. Takagi thinks that they didn't say much in order to not cause panic among the people as people tend to get chaotic and hard to control when they are in fear of something. On TV, it is reported that the US president along with other political figures left the White House and the reason for it might be that the government is planning to use nuclear weapons on the cities. Hirano fails to grasp the severity of everything as the whole world is engulfed in darkness in a matter of hours. Takagi says that everyone in the world is experiencing a pandemic like the Spanish flu and the Black Death. Takashi wonders how a pandemic ends. Miss Shizuka tells everyone that a pandemic usually ends when too many people die as it halts the spread of the disease. Hirano points out that the dead can still move and attack people so unlike the other pandemics, this one might never end at all. Miss Shizuka says that when the weather gets hot, their flesh might decompose and they will become skeletons but it will take a lot of days and even months in winter. Takagi interrupts the conversation and says that medical logic doesn't apply to corpses that move around and attack people. For Siko, moving to a safe place after rescuing their families will be the most important part of their journey. The group make their way towards the parking lot and rescue a bunch of students who were surrounded by the zombies. 
They reach a dead end at a place where there are a ton of zombies. Takagi tells everyone that they can't see and are only attracted to sounds. Seiko thinks that someone needs to go and confirm Takagi's theory about the zombies. Takashi volunteers to go and test it but Rei tries to stop him and asks why he would do that. Takashi doesn't know why he is doing it himself and goes downstairs. He stands in the middle of all those zombies without making a single sound. A zombie just walks past him and the others don't know that he is there as well. Seeing this he throws a shoe at a locker to get all the zombies to clear the entrance. Everyone gets down one by one but the weapon of one of the students hits the railing causing a huge echoing sound across the school. As all zombies are attracted towards them now, Takashi tells everyone to make a run for the bus. Takagi tells Takashi that if he didn't yell at everyone to run, they could have just eliminated the zombies at the inside and they would be fine but Ray tells her that the sound echoed and attracted all the zombies nonetheless. The group continues to make their way to the bus but one of the newer students, Takuzo, becomes food for the zombies. Naomi knowing well that she would die, went to die with Takuzo. Miss Shizuka thinks people rather want to die with the people that they love the most. The group reaches and everyone starts to get inside. Miss Shizuka gets in the driver's seat and says that it is different from a car, just as they were about to move out. They saw the instructor of Class 3 a Mr. Shido running towards the bus with a bunch of students. Miss Shizuka tells everyone that they need to go but Takashi wants to wait for them to come. Ray tells Takashi that he shouldn't help Shido and to leave him for dead. Shido on the other hand tells his student to make it to the bus. One of his students fell to the ground as he sprained his ankle. He asks for Shido's help but Shido just kicks him in the face and says that the weak don't have a place in the world anymore. He gets to the bus as well and Miss Shizuka puts her foot on the accelerator. She rams through a bunch of zombies and the school gate to reach the main road. On the bus, Shido asks Siko if she is the leader of their group. Siko tells him that there is no leader among them as they are together just to help each other survive. One of the students of Shido's group complains about Takashi's decision to go to the city. Miss Shizuka has had enough of him as she can't focus on driving while he is speaking like that. The man reveals that he just can't stand the presence of Takashi and proceeds to punch him but Rei steps in and knocks him out with her spear. Shido claps and says that this conflict just proved his point that their group requires a leader. Takagi complains that they have only him as a nominee so it isn't fair, but Shido says that he is a teacher and can better guide the students so it makes him more than qualified already. Some of the students get up and agree on him being the leader. Seeing this happening, Rei gets off the bus as she can't be with someone like Shido. Takashi goes out of the bus to get Rei but they are trapped in a tunnel when a bus comes crashing in and blocks the tunnel. Takashi tells Siko that they will meet up at the Eastern Police Station at 7pm today and if they can't make it there today, they will go there tomorrow at the same time. Miss Shizuka takes the bus through a different route as that route is blocked now. Takashi and Rei exit the tunnel but the former gets attacked by a zombie wearing a helmet. As he almost got overpowered by it, Rei smashes his head. They look to check out the bike of that zombie and found it down the hill. Ray asks Takashi if he has a license to drive the bike. Takashi says that driving without a license is a special privilege given only to high school students. After this, the duo gets on the bike and moves towards the city. It's 5 a.m. on the first day of the outbreak, which is also called Z-Day. Takashi and Ray are moving into the city on a bike. Sometime later, Takashi recalls all the events he has been through that have led him to where he is now. At night, Ray asks Takashi if anyone will come to rescue them. Takashi shatters her dream of getting rescued and tells her that no one is coming to rescue them as they simply can't afford it in the grand scheme of things. Even if they wanted to, they might not be able to rescue them given the circumstances. Rei tells Takashi that he always says things to ruin the most important part of the conversation since they were in kindergarten. As they were talking, zombies began to close in on them so they moved away. Meanwhile, Siko and others are stuck in a long traffic queue trying to get into the city. Hirano's tummy started to growl, making Takagi tell him to keep it quiet. Hearing gunshots, some girls on the bus get scared but Shido creepily hugs them and calms them down. Rei and Takashi continue to keep going and stop near a police car that has its light on. Takashi jokingly says that he is asking to get arrested as he has no helmet or license. They go towards the car and see that it is rammed down by a truck and the police officers inside are dead. Rei goes closer to the car to check out for useful stuff. Takashi tells her to be careful as gas is leaking out of the car. Rei finds a revolver and a bunch of other police equipment. The only thing Takashi knows about guns is that you are not supposed to put your finger on the trigger unless you are going to shoot the gun. As Takeshi was checking out the gun, Ray checked out the gun of the other police officer. But sadly it was damaged so Ray just took out its bullets as they were fine and gave them to Takashi. They stopped near a gas station to get their bikes filled up. Ray asks if the gas station will have any gas given the situation. Takashi tells her that gas stations usually have a tank so big that it can fill up thousands of cars so they are bound to find some gas here. 
Takashi gets close to the gas station and realizes that it is a self-service gas station and he only has 30 yen on him. Rei calls him the worst which makes Takashi angry who then says that he can't ever be like Hisashi. He asks for some money from Rei but she forgot her wallet in the bag. Takashi goes inside the store to look for some money and tells Rei to scream if she needs any help. Takashi slams open the cash register and collects the money. Rei thinks that she needs to stop giving Takashi a hard time when suddenly she gets captured by a man. Rei lets out a loud scream which makes Takashi come out but he can't do anything as the guy has held a knife at Rei's throat. Takashi tells him to let Rei but the guy denies it and says that he needs a girl in order to survive this world filled with monsters. Takashi calls him crazy and the guy proudly accepts that he is indeed crazy as his whole family became zombies right in front of him and he had to smash everyone's head. Rei tries to get away from her but the man captures her again and starts to grope her inappropriately. The man tells Takashi to throw his baseball bat away and to fill up the bike with the money he stole from the store. No matter what Takashi said, the man refused to let him near and threatened to kill Rei if he got closer. After filling the bike with gas, Takashi finds the opportunity to get close to him and points his gun at the right part of his chest. The man tries to stop him from shooting by saying that the gas station behind him might explode but Takashi just shoots him without hesitation. He gets on the bike with Rei and leaves the man as food for the zombies. In the morning while they are traveling, Rei asks Takashi if something is wrong as he is being unusually quiet. Takashi is just distraught by what happened and thinks that stuff like that will continue to happen in this world from now on. He thinks that it has only been a day since this all happened and he already had to kill a guy. Episode 5 starts with two pilots discussing that everyone in the plane isn't injured or has a high fever. Before the plane could take off, two soldiers use sniper rifles to eliminate all the zombies at the runaway. The female soldier Rika adjusts her clothes as her chest feels numb after laying down for such a long time. The male soldier offers to help her but Rika says that he will only get the chance if he gets better than her but it is hard to get better than a soldier who ranks in the top 5 of the country. The soldier finds it hard to believe that the zombies even showed up at an ocean airport which can only be accessed by boat. Rika says that only technicians and political figures along with their families are allowed in the airport so someone among them must have been affected. Even though the situation is not bad at the airport, they have no clue how long it will remain like this. Rika reveals that she is going to the city sooner or later as she has a friend in the city who is in fact, Miss Shizuka. Back on the school bus, Takagi wakes up Hirano as they have no time to doze off. Takagi says that airports are another way to get to this place and people are probably trying to get to the places where it is hard for the zombies to reach such as isolated islands or ocean airports. Takagi thinks that the self-defense force and the police have a stern policy on accepting people at safe places as it is easier to remain in a small number of people. Meanwhile, Shido is seducing the students at the back of the bus. Takagi wishes that Takashi was there with her so she could discuss a strategy with him. Siko is always worried about Takashi and Rei in hopes that they are safe. The scene then shifts to Takashi and Rei who see people wreaking havoc in the streets. They have no option to escape from them so they go full speed through them. The people attack them but they manage to get through safely. The duo reach the bridge but seeing the number of people there, they decide to go on a different bridge to enter the city. Some students get past the police and try to enter the city forcefully but the police use high pressure water to throw them into the river. At the school bus, Shido gives a speech to the students as he wants them to stay with him. Siko and Takagi think that Shido has formed somewhat of a religious cult group given the way how the students agree with everything he said. Siko says that they need to meet up with Takashi. Takagi asks her if he is more important than their family. Siko's father has told her that a promise made must be kept even if it costs someone their life. When Siko asks about Hirano's parents, he reveals that his father is a jewelry merchant and is currently in Amsterdam whilst his mother is in Paris because of her fashion designing work. Miss Shizuka wants to join Siko and the others to meet up with Takashi. Shido objects to it and says that he can't let Miss Shizuka go as she is a doctor and is extremely valuable to them. He approaches her but Hirano stops him by grazing his face with a nail. He warns Shido to not get any closer as he would have no problem killing him. Moreover, Shido has bullied and made fun of him a lot at school so he will kill him without hesitation. Takashi and Rei go to the Onbetsu bridge and see that the situation is the same there as on the previous bridge. Takashi thinks that they must cross the bridge before 7pm in order to meet up with the others. As they were talking, Takashi hears a nail being shot at some distance. Siko and the others are at a bridge fighting off monsters. They are getting overwhelmed by them but luckily, Takashi and Rei arrive in the nick of time to help them. Takashi throws his gun towards Hirano as he is more experienced with them and eliminates all of the zombies at the bridge. Rei rushes to miss Shizuka and hugs her instantly as she misses her. 
Hirano gets excited examining the gun and bombards Takashi with a bunch of questions. As the sun was setting, Miss Shizuka suggests that they should call this a day and move to a room she has nearby. Takagi thinks that it is her boyfriend's place but Miss Shizuka says that it is her friend's place and that friend is Rika. Rika has given the keys to her as she is always busy working and traveling. Miss Shizuka says that it is a duplex standing on the river and has a convenience store nearby so they can get useful stuff there. To top it all off, it also has a car that looks like a tank. Takagi can't wait to get into the apartment as she needs a shower and hopes that electricity is still available in the apartment. Hirano looks at her deeply which makes Takagi punch him to oblivion. Afterward, Takashi takes Miss Shizuka to the apartment and the others arrive too. They realize that Rika has Hummer as a vehicle. They look at the apartment and upstairs eliminating zombies on the way. Takashi is proud of the fact that it is the first time they are actually attacking the zombies in order to survive and not kill them in self-defense. A news channel reports that this disease is being called the killing pandemic and government agencies of different countries have no solution for this and are falling apart. Around 2 million people are converted into zombies already and the number is expected to reach 10 million in a day or two. Back at the apartment, the girls undress themselves and prepare to take a shower. The girls are having a good time in the shower while Takashi and Hirano try to open up a locker with a crowbar. They find a rifle, sniper, and shotgun in the locker. Takashi wonders what kind of friend Miss Shizuka has after seeing all these advanced weapons and ammunition. Rika sneezes and says that someone is talking about her. When her colleague inquires about it, Rika says that she doesn't have a lot of friends but if she had to choose one it must be Shizuka. Hirano gets excited seeing all the weapons and surprises Takashi with his in-depth knowledge of every weapon there. Takashi grabs a gun and accidentally points it toward Hirano who tells him that he should never point the gun at someone he doesn't intend to shoot even if doesn't have any bullets. While they were putting bullets in the magazines, Takashi asks Hirano if he has practiced with airsoft guns before but to his surprise. Hirano trained with real guns for a month under an ex-Delta Force captain who used to work for a private military company called Blackwater. Takashi thinks that he is an expert in all these things and is glad that Hirano isn't his enemy. Takashi wonders what kind of friend she is to have all these illegal weapons in her apartment. Hirano tells him that it is not illegal to buy these guns and their parts separately but it is illegal if you put them all together. Moreover, according to Miss Shizuka, she used to be a sat soldier so she could probably get away with anything as long as she was a police officer. At the bridge, the people are criticizing the lockdown and question its necessity. The reports are stuck there as well because their facility has been moved to an oceanic facility. The police head at the bridge receives an order that he is allowed to do whatever he wants to make sure that order remains. One of the police officers thinks that they must sacrifice a small group of people in order to rescue a big one. Takashi watches the situation through binoculars and says that all of this is just like a movie he once watched. Hirano tells Takashi to turn on the TV where people are shown to be protesting against the police and the government. People think that this is not a disease but a biological weapon that is developed by their government in America. Takashi gets baffled hearing this as there is no way the government could develop a biological weapon that can allow people to walk and eat others after they die. At the bridge, the police shoot at the zombies but stop when they see a mother crying for her baby. The baby transforms into a zombie and bites its mother in the neck. A police officer kills the mother who has now turned into a zombie but the protesters say that the police have finally begun shooting at random citizens. The head of the police at the bridge goes to the person leading the protest and tells him to leave as it is dangerous for all of them but he refuses to do so. The officer tells him that they must keep the order intact at all costs and kills the protester. Just after they turn off the TV, a drunk Miss Shizuka gets frisky with Takashi and Hirano whilst wearing nothing but a towel. Takashi tells her to go downstairs and keep her voice down but Miss Shizuka just hugs him. Takashi carries Miss Shizuka to take her downstairs and meets Rei at the stairs who also seems to be drunk. A drunk Ray starts crying remembering that Hisashi got killed and she still hasn't found her parents. After taking Miss Shizuka downstairs and covering her with a towel, Takashi goes to the kitchen and sees Siko in extremely revealing clothes. Siko apologizes for her dress as she couldn't find anything that fits her. As they were talking, Ray called for Takashi to come to the stairs. There, Ray starts ranting about different things and compares him to Hisashi on multiple occasions which makes Takashi extremely angry. Ray calms him down and the two get frisky with each other. Back at the bridge, a police officer tells a bulldozer driver to ram through the zombies at the bridge and promises him that the police are responsible for everything he does. As the bulldozers ram through the zombies, the people get into a panic to move out of their way. The higher rank police officer tells the bulldozer drivers to get the bulldozer back when they reach the middle of the bridge and they also have unconditional permission to shoot at anyone who enters the area. In the midst of all this, the commander shoots himself in the head and commits suicide. Back in the apartment, Takashi and Rei hear a dog barking so Takashi goes to the balcony to check it out. 
Seeing all the zombies, Takashi thinks that the real end of the world has just begun. On the street down from the apartment, a boy is having fun killing all the zombies with his shotgun until he fails to load his gun in time and becomes zombie food. Siko, Hirano, and Takashi witness all this from the balcony of the apartment. Takashi has had enough of seeing people die and doing nothing so he plans to go downstairs with Siko. And Hirano put some sense in him. Siko says that they can't rescue every living person out there and even if they fight they might become a target for the people who are still alive. Siko gives him binoculars so he can see people die and get used to it. Takashi looks around the area seeing people getting eaten by zombies until he sees a little girl with her dad trying to find refuge. They go to a nearby house where people have barricaded themselves and ask them to let them in. When they refuse to do so the dad threatens them by saying that he is going to break the door if they don't open it. Hearing this, the people inside tell him that they are going to open the door but when they do so, they stab the dad in the chest. With his dying breaths, the dad tells her daughter to find a safe place and hide. When the dad dies, the girl cries and lets out loud screams whilst hugging the dad. All the sound attracts the zombies to her. Seeing this, Hirano uses the sniper rifle he found at the apartment to kill the zombies around the girl. Takashi says to Hirano that wasn't he going to abandon everyone in order to stay alive but Hirano says that it's a little girl they are talking about and offers to assist him from the balcony. Takashi goes downstairs and tells Rei that he is going to rescue a little girl. Rei offers to come with him but he denies it and tells her to stay on the lookout. When Rei insists, Siko tells her to let Takashi go as it is a man's decision. Siko vows to protect the place while he isn't present. Rei gives him a gun before he goes out. Takashi gets on the bike and rides towards the girl whilst Hirano eliminates all the zombies that are in his way. Takagi gets up in the meantime and asks what the commotion is all about. Takashi makes a rough landing when he reaches the girl. He jokingly says that the landing didn't go as smoothly as it does in anime. The dog he heard barking earlier is also protecting the girl with him. Miss Shizuka asks Takagi if it's time for breakfast when she wakes her up. Takagi goes to Hirano and tells him to pack up as they are planning to go down now. She also instructs Miss Shizuka to stop roaming around naked. Siko says that it is their chance to get in the car as all the zombies are drawn to Takashi and there is no way that he is going to make his way back in that bike amidst all those zombies. The girl grabs Takashi and sadly tells him that her papa has died. Takashi got a shirt that was hanging on a rope and covered her dad with it. He also gives the little girl a flower so she can put it on her father. In the meantime, the others go to the Hummer and load all useful stuff on it quietly. Hirano thinks that the zombies are too much for the Hummer to handle. Takagi gives Hirano a signal to get down so they can get moving. Takashi carries the little girl and the dog and gets on the concrete fence in front of the houses as it is hard for the zombies to reach there. While he was walking on the fence, the girl tells Takashi that she can't hold her pee anymore. Takashi tells her to just pee right in the spot as they have no other option. He almost loses his balance when a zombie manages to grab his foot. Siko and the others ram through the zombies in order to reach Takashi. When the Hummer stops, Hirano clears the zombies with his gun while Siko is doing what she does best. Takashi manages to reach the hammer in the end and jumps on it. In the plane that took off earlier, someone infected managed to get in and havoc ensued in the plane. The first lady and the president along with his guards are bitten by the zombies and there is not much time left before they turn into one too. Since all of them are bitten and there is no place for them to land, the chairman present with the president tells him to give the order to attack the other countries with intercontinental ballistic missiles before they attack the United States of America. The chairman tries to convince the president by saying that it is the only way for them to fulfill their duty to serve the people under the United States Constitution. As he was trying to convince the president, the chairman starts to puke out blood and says that he doesn't have a lot of time left. He orders a guard to kill him before he turns into a zombie and tells the president one last time to execute the order and give the code. The screen then shifts to the main group who are entering the city by crossing the river in their Hummer. Takagi is on the lookout for zombies and people while Hirano and Alice, the little girl they rescued earlier, sing poems. Hirano sings a violent version of the poem which Alice seemed to love but Takagi tells Hirano to stop teaching the girl such violent poems. Inside the Hummer, Siko is sleeping on Takashi's lap. Rei gets jealous seeing that and wakes up Takashi by aggressively grabbing his cheeks. When Takashi wakes up, he gets startled seeing Siko sleeping and drooling on his lap. Takashi tells Rei that she should get dressed since the sun is up and they are moving into the city. Hirano tells Takashi that the girl's name is Alice Mercado and her father was a news reporter. They don't know about her mother as the father just told Alice that they are going to meet her later. The girls start to dress up in their clothes. Hirano tells Takashi that it is time for them to do what they must, which is looking at the girls dressing up but Takashi denies it as he isn't in a hurry to die just yet. Hirano hands Takashi a shotgun and tells him that all he has to do is point and shoot at them. Takashi initially denies the gun at first but agrees to use it when Hirano explains it's working to him. 
He shows Takashi how to reload the gun and where to aim but warns him that it has powerful recoils. Rei also grabs a gun that has a military bayonet attached to it. Takagi says that she will get Hirano to teach her how to shoot when Takashi asks if she can use a gun. The group goes up the hill to check if the area around them is clear. Takashi says that they will go to Takaga's house which is in the second block of the Higashisaka district but warns her that anything could have happened to them. They move through the cities and Alice gets excited seeing all the cool bikes. Takashi says that he hasn't seen any helicopters or planes today as there were a lot yesterday. Ray happily says that they haven't encountered any zombies since dawn but just after she says it, they run into a ton of zombies. Miss Shizuka takes an alternate route and rams through the zombies. Ray, who is on top of the vehicle, warns Miss Shizuka that there is a wire barrier right in front of them. Miss Shizuka manages to turn the vehicle but struggles to stop it. The Hummer starts moving towards the concrete wall. Miss Shizuka presses the brake aggressively causing Ray to fall off the vehicle. Takashi goes to her rescue and shoots at them but gets surprised to see that only one zombie died even though he aimed at their head. Hirano tells him that he doesn't know what he is doing. Because of the recoil, the muzzle moves off the target and the gun shoots high so Takashi should support the gun and lean on it whilst aiming around their chest so if the gun moves up it will hit their head. Takashi learns how to shoot the gun and begins eliminating the zombies but he runs out of bullets soon. When he tries to reload the shotgun, he accidentally drops all the shotgun shells on the floor. Seeing that they are being surrounded by zombies, he grabs Ray's gun and uses her chest as a support to shoot the rifle. Hirano tells him to disengage the safety and pull the slide to the right then the gun will be ready to shoot the zombie. Takashi does so and begins shooting at the zombies while Siko eliminates the zombies with her wooden sword. Alice hands Hirano more magazines while Miss Shizuka tries to start the hammer. Seeing everyone do their best, Takagi gets out of the car and starts shooting the zombies herself. When the bullets run out, Takashi grabs Takaga's gun and uses it to hit zombies. Takashi and Siko go to a nearby high place and hit the metal railing in order to attract the monsters but it wasn't enough. Hirano grabs Alice and tells her to jump the fence with Zeke the dog and says that he will come soon after. Alice starts crying when she hears Hirano say this as her dad said the same thing to her but left her too. Even the look he gave her before he died was the same as Hirano is giving her now. She tells Hirano that she doesn't want to stay alone. Instead she wants to stay with them forever, while the group waits for their impending doom. Some people dressed in firefighters' clothes arrive and rescue everyone, when one of them takes off their helmet and turns out to be Takaga's mother. Although the others are in safe hands now, Takashi and Siko are still not safe and are unable to reach them. Takagi tells them that she will be waiting for them in her house. Takashi tells Siko that he knows the area and begins moving toward the house. Siko doesn't think that they will be able to reach the second block where Takaga's house is as every route is covered by zombies. Takashi thinks that they would need a bike to get through. They go to a nearby showroom where they discover a vehicle that can drive in water too. Takashi goes to the bank of the river banking as zombies struggle to get down steep slopes and stairs but as it is never that easy, zombies arrive there too. Takashi thinks of testing the amphibious qualities of the vehicle and drives towards the river and lands on a small piece of land there. Going into the water caused Siko's clothes to get all wet and revealing. She blushes and covers herself as she is a girl too. On the island, Siko starts to get a cold so Takashi gives her a tank top as her clothes are all wet. Siko messes with Takashi a bit who then asks Siko if she ever had romantic feelings for someone in her life. Siko says that she did have a crush on someone. After the zombies go away, they start moving towards the house again. Takashi lands the vehicle in a fountain causing Siko's clothes to get wet again a bit. She angrily asks Takashi if he enjoys making girls all wet. Takashi asks her to fetch him some tape. He turns the steering of the vehicle right and tapes it. The vehicle started to make circles around the fountain attracting all the zombies toward it. Siko gets off and eliminates some of the zombies that are on the way. Seeing her effortlessly kill hordes of zombies is unbelievable for Takashi. Siko keeps on eliminating the zombies until she runs into a bunch of zombies who are children. She freezes right there in the spot unable to find the courage to kill them. As the child zombies move towards her to bite her, Takashi arrives in the nick of time and kills them. They go to a nearby place to stay there for the night. At that place, Takashi finds a sword for Siko and hands her dry clothes back to her. Takashi finds a portable potty and gives it to Siko as a joke. She asks Takashi if he is not going to ask about why she froze in front of those zombies. She references herself when she told Takashi that she had a crush too and says that being a girl she too had a crush on some boys but she never shared her feelings with any of them as she thinks that she doesn't have a right to. Takashi tells her that she could get any boy that he wants but Siko interrupts him and says that she can't as she almost killed someone. Four years ago, Siko was attacked on the street but she wasn't hurt. She had a wooden sword on her and smashed his shoulder blade and femur. After the police arrived, she told them the whole situation and they gave her a ride back home. 
Takashi says that it was just excessive self-defense but that wasn't the case as Siko admits that she enjoyed doing it. When she realized that she had the upper hand on him because of the wooden sword, she started to pretend that she was in fear and incited him only to hurt him badly afterward and have fun while doing it. She tells Takashi that this is the real her and does a girl like her deserve to have a sincere heart. Takashi says that since the zombies emerged, he too has been like this. Siko interrupts her and says that she has been like this even before the zombies emerged and it only got worse when they arrived. During the last fight, she realized that nothing has changed about her, and as messed up as it is, that's what made her stop, not the child zombies. Hearing all this, Takashi grabs her, causing her to go silent, and kisses her. In the morning, they go out and realize that zombies have arrived there as well due to the sound of rustling leaves. Siko struggles to find the courage to kill the zombies. Takashi grabs her chest in order to give her a reason for fighting. Yup, you heard it just right. He tells her that she is the best woman ever and instructs her to not let him and herself die. After all that weird motivational speech, Siko gets ready and goes ham on the zombie but with a real sword this time. After eliminating the zombies, they move towards Takaga's house. At Takaga's house, Hirano and the others are waiting for Takashi and Siko to arrive. When they arrive, Takagi orders for the gate to be open. Alice rushes towards them and gives them a tight hug. One day has passed since Takashi and Siko arrived at Takaga's house. In a room, Takashi holds Rei down so Miss Shizuka can apply medicine to her body which Rei doesn't want as it hurts a lot. This one day at Takaga's house is the only time they were given the luxury to be normal humans amidst all that chaos. When she is done applying the medicine, Miss Shizuka asks Rei if the medicine is causing a burning sensation when it is applied. Rei calls Takashi a traitor as all she needed was some medicine on her and it didn't have to be Miss Shizuka that applied it. She then tells him to leave as her chest hurts because of the way he used the gun and now she has to apply medicine for it. Takashi goes out and sees two men barely lifting a heavy box. Takashi offers to help but they deny it and say that it is the job of the adults. Siko tells Takashi to not worry about it too much. Takashi looks at her and gets stunned seeing how beautiful she looks in a kimono. When Siko blushes, Takashi panics and tells her to not take it the wrong way. As they are talking, Alice arrives and asks why they are happy. Takashi tells her that they are happy seeing her safe and healthy. Takashi hears Takagi fighting with her mom and goes to check her out. She angrily tells him to call her by her first name and to stop apologizing for every little thing. Takashi meets her mother and talks about how big their house is. Hearing this she remembers that Takashi never came here in the past as he was scared of this house when he was a child. Hirano is dismantling the guns to have a look at them. Takagi arrives and tells him to enjoy it while he can as electricity and water will not be available here forever. She tells him that even when everything is normal, it takes a lot of technicians and workers to keep the enormous network of water and electricity working but now they don't know how long it will continue that way. Takagi's mother Yuriko tells Takashi that when the dead people started attacking others, the commander sent the self-defense forces to the power plants at his own discretion as he couldn't wait around for the orders of the useless prime minister. Hearing this Takashi thinks that the power plants can be maintained as the self-defense forces are there but Yuriko tells him to think about how much longer those workers can maintain that place as they have families who are not with them. She plans to take people who are ready to survive on buses to those power plants. The scene then shifts to Hirano as an adult tells him to stop playing with the gun. Seiya Takagi steps into the conversation and shuts him down. She tells Hirano that they need to do something as all the people here are adults and they are just a bunch of children in their eyes. Yuriko wants Takagi to understand her as no matter what she says she just doesn't listen to her. She asks Takashi for his help in order to convince her but Takashi thinks that he has never won a debate with her since they were in kindergarten. Everyone gathers in the room Rei's and as she can't move. Takagi wants to discuss if they plan to move as a group or not as they have joined a larger and more close-knit group. Takagi thinks that they can either stay with them or leave them. Takashi thinks that there is no reason to separate from them and the things in the city are getting worse and her parents handle the situation quite well. She admits that her parents are the best as they managed to do so much in just two days. As soon as they discovered that something bad was going on they acted quickly and protected the house and everyone in it. Takagi mockingly says that they didn't forget about their daughter and she was the first thing that came to her mind. Takashi tells her to stop saying bad stuff about her parents when she says that they gave up on her instantly thinking that there is no way she could have survived this whole situation. Takashi lifts her up and tells her that they all feel the same. She should be feeling lucky as at least she knows that her parents are safe. Takagi tells Takashi to put her down as she is normal now. As they were talking, Seiya Takagi's father Suikairo Takagi arrives at the house with a zombie in a cage who was the former retainer of the house and his best friend. He lets the zombie out and kills it to show everyone that these zombies are extremely dangerous and are not human anymore. He tells everyone that even if it is their family, friends, or someone they love, they shouldn't hesitate to kill these zombies. 
Hirano tells everyone that swords are inefficient as a Japanese sword can break after hitting a bone and become useless after wounding three or four people. Siko interrupts him and says that the swordsman's technique determines the quality of the sword. Hirano tells Takashi that he can't even shoot a gun properly and goes when Takashi tells him to cut it off. Alice asks Takashi if he had a fight with Hirano and suggests that he needs to talk with him until they can figure out what is wrong. Takashi goes out to reflect on himself when Alice comes to her out of breath and tells him to go with her as Hirano is in big trouble. Hirano is surrounded by a bunch of adults telling him to give up his weapons but he denies saying that there is no one better than him when it comes to guns. Takashi and Suikairo arrive at the place Hirano is in. He asks Hirano for his name and tells him that he has spirit in him by the way he speaks. Hirano tells him that he can't give up the guns as the only thing he is good at are these guns. Takashi jumps into the conversation between them. Suikairo remembers him as he has been friends with her daughter since they were children. Takashi tells him that Hirano has protected his daughter countless times with these guns. Siko confirms the skill and bravery of Hirano to Suikairo. Takagi comes to his defense too and says that without him, she would have been a zombie by now as Hirano was there to protect him when he was not. Meanwhile, Shido receives a call from someone inside Takagi's house saying that if arrives there at this time, they will let him in for sure. Shido has brainwashed every student that's with him and made a cult where the students engage in sexual activities with each other all the time. He threw one of the students outside to become food for the zombies because refused to do what he said and objected to it. At Takaga's house, the group is in an argument with a bunch of people who think that all these dead people walking are fake. Takagi tells them that the government is calling this a killing pandemic just because they fail to understand why the dead people are attacking others, so they pretend that they care so people don't cause panic. Even after all that explanation, the people refuse to understand this and say that this must have some kind of new infectious disease. Takagi tells them that it doesn't matter what they think because in order to figure out the true reason for all this, specialists need to work and research in a calm and relaxing environment for a long time. She tells them to just protect themselves and not get eaten by the zombies as her father instructed them. The dumb lady still doesn't understand that point and thinks that they are just trying to control people with violence and forcing them to be murderers. She tells Takashi and the others that no rich person or kid is going to be making decisions now instead it will be the peaceful adults. When they go away, Hirano tells Takagi that humans try not to see what they don't want to see. Hearing him say this, Takashi remembers his past as well. Hirano explains that people don't want to be denied so even when something bad is happening they won't do anything. Takagi thinks that they should change according to circumstances. Hirano agrees with her but says that it isn't the case for most people as they try their best to stay normal even when they know that it is not going to work. Hearing him say all this, Takagi likes Hirano a bit more. Takashi says that this conversation was really informative for him. Takagi and Hirano say that it's the reason he is their leader as he listens to others and doesn't shove his ideals everywhere. In the meantime, Siko is sitting with Suikairo in a dojo. Suikairo gives a special and rare sword to her as a token of gratitude for receiving training from her father. Siko refuses to accept the gift and tells him that it would be best if he gave it to her father directly. Siko tells him that even though she protected her daughter on a few occasions, she also helped her in her own way on multiple occasions and allowed Siko to survive different hardships. She further tells him that he should keep her daughter with him as she loves them a lot and give this sword to Takashi instead. Suikairo denies it as he thinks that even though he is a fine man he still hesitates a bit. Back in Takashi's room, Rei tells him that girls like cute boys and those who are sweet with them. Takashi thinks that he is nothing like those boys. Rei says that it was the case before but he is different now as he faced everything courageously and protected everyone. Rei confesses that she wants to be with him forever even if he won't love her back. The two have a heart to heart with each other before Rei goes outside and sees Siko standing in front of the room. Siko didn't enter the room as she realized that someone was inside with him. Meanwhile, Shido along with his students arrive at Takaga's house. Seeing the cute girls begging for help, the guards at the gate let them in. Takeshi tells Suikairo that he needs to find his family no matter what, since his father works far away. He can't do anything about him but he can go to rescue his mother and look for Rei's parents as well. Suikairo tells him that they are going to leave early in the morning the day after tomorrow. Takashi tells him that he will find everyone and be back in time. Moreover, if he doesn't return it means that he decided to stay there. The others want to go with him as he will need people to rescue the family members and to lead them back here. As they were talking, Rei notices that Shido is outside and immediately charges towards him with her gun. Shido is talking with a rival politician of his father. They think that it is not the time to worry about the election plus Shido is just a teacher now. Shido mentions that his father was a congressional representative but to him, he is a tyrant that made her mother suffer and drove her to suicide. 
His father told him in the past that there is an annoying man in the public safety office. And his daughter Ray goes to the school where he works so to give that man or in other words Ray's father some suffering. He tells Shido to make Ray repeat the grade as this will teach him a lesson. Ray reaches Shido and points the bayonet of her gun at his face. She tells Shido that she was taught the spear and bayonet by her father who never lost at the prefectural competition. Shido made a man that was never phased by anything apologize to her in tears as she had to repeat the grade because of him. Ray knew that Shido controlled the grades at school but kept her temper as if the investigation of his father goes smoothly. He would be able to arrest Shido and his father. Suikairo also arrives and says that he knows what kind of man Shido's father is but leaves the decision to Ray. Although she wanted to kill Shido, she backs off as Shido isn't even worth killing. Seeing this, Suikairo makes Shido leave the premises of his house along with his student. The scene then shifts to a US submarine where the personnel prepare to fight missiles as per the order of the president. Some people at the International Space Station observe this from space. They reveal that Russia has fired MIRV missiles when the US fired theirs. Multiple missiles can be seen launching from the submarines. Counter missiles are launched to destroy the missiles that were launched but one the missile failed to launch from a ship as everyone in that ship died and became zombies so no one was left to initiate the launch. That missile exploded in the air and was observed by the International Space Station, Rika, and the others as well. A few minutes before the missile explodes, Miss Shizuka calls Rika and gets happy hearing her voice. Rika asks Shizuka where she is right now but before she could answer the question. The imp from that missile fired all electronics and vehicles with computers within the radius. Takagi tells Rei to check if she can see a red dot in the scope of her rifle. When Rei checks it she tells Takagi that it isn't there anymore. Meanwhile, as all the vehicles stopped working, Shido crashes the school bus into a barrier that was keeping the zombies away from Takaga's house. Takagi tells everyone that it was an electromagnetic pulse blast which is also known as a high-altitude nuclear explosion. The gamma rays from a nuclear warhead of missiles scatter electrons from the atmospheric molecules converting them into Compton electrons which generates an electromagnetic pulse that travels a very long distance. Now they won't be able to use any electronics and cars with computers won't work either. The power plants will stop working now as well unless they implement anti-EMP measures which are done only by a select few. Suikaira orders for lanterns to be placed everywhere. Takagi tells her father that only cars which don't have a computer will work. Hearing this, he sends his man to look for them. As they were talking zombies closed in on the house so Suikaira ordered for the gates to be closed even though some people are still outside. The decision is a rational one as if he doesn't close the gates they will lose everything and everyone. One of his men brings weapons for Yuriko to fight the zombies. She gives a gun to Takagi as well and tells Hirano to teach her how to shoot. The zombies tore down the metal gate and started to get inside the house. When the zombies get inside, havoc ensues and flames start to emerge. Siko and the others started to do what they do best, which is killing zombies. Suikairo calls for every able man to fight and orders women and children to stay behind. He tells Takashi to go his own way and rescue his parents. He also instructs Hirano to take care of her daughter. When Takagi objects, her mother slaps her and tells her to not make it harder for them as it already is. Takagi expresses how much she loves her parents and goes away with others. Her parents and their men start to fight the zombies. Siko and the others reach the Hummer where the man repairing it reveals that the Hummer is infielded as it is triple copper plated but will take a bit more time to get it going as it still got a bit of damage. They have no other choice but to defend the place until the Hummer is repaired. Everyone is fighting zombies as zombie corpses are flying everywhere. Rei gets into a tough situation when a zombie grabs her gun but Takashi rescues her in time. After a bit of fighting, the Hummer gets repaired. Miss Shizuka starts the car and calls for everyone to get inside. They invite Matsudo, the man repairing the car, as well but he refuses to come as his crush is still here. While escaping on the Hummer, they encounter a very tight opening to pass through so Miss Shizuka tilts the car like a female version of James Bond and passes through it. When they go away, Yurika and Suikairo feel excited that there is nothing holding them back anymore. In the Hummer, Takagi feels a weird sound coming from the engine. Miss Shizuka wonders how long the car will keep running. After some time they reach a dead end at the high as the way is blocked by all the crash cars and hordes of zombies wandering around. Since they have no other choice, the group gets out and smiles before they start killing the zombie. That's all for today. How do you think the story of High School of the Dead proceeds from this point? Let us know in the comments down below. Do leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content.